Have you ever heard the phrase, you can't game on a Mac? Well, I'm sure you have, and that phrase has had some merit over the years, mostly for two reasons. The first reason is because Mac OS has a limited library of games compared to Windows. And the second reason is traditionally Macs, especially Mac laptops, have had some pretty weak graphics cards in comparison to their Windows counterparts over the years. However, the notion of gaming on a Mac might not be such a ridiculous prospect anymore. As in my last video, I've discovered that this new generation of 16-inch MacBook Pros, even with the base graphics card, are showing around double the graphics performance compared to the base Radeon Pro 560X graphics cards found in the 2019 MacBook Pro refresh that just happened five months ago. So the age-old question remains, can you game on a Mac? Well, I'm gonna find that out in just this video by playing some games on Mac OS, and then I'm gonna show you how to expand those capabilities even further by installing Windows 10 on your Mac using the Boot Camp Assistant. Now for this video, all of these tests are done on the MacBook Pro 16 inch with the Core i9 2.3 gigahertz eight core processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM and the Radeon Pro 5500M with four gigabytes of video memory. Now first I'm gonna show you gaming performance on titles just using Mac OS. Now despite the long held belief that you can't game on a Mac, Mac OS does have some pretty decent games but sometimes the titles are older or just poorly optimized. Now, one of my favorite games on Mac OS is StarCraft II, which is actually pretty well optimized and uses Apple's Metal API to take advantage of the Radeon Pro 5500M. Setting the resolution to 1920 by 1200, for the most part, you can expect to hit 60 FPS even on extreme settings. But those frame rates can quickly dip when you start to get a lot of units on screen. So realistically, for a game like StarCraft II, where you need to make really quick decisions managing your macros and micros, you'll want to reduce that to high or medium settings to ensure the smoothest gameplay possible. Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor is a bit older as well, but still a favorite of mine, and it plays on the Mac. It also comes with a built-in benchmarking tool, so I ran it on medium and got an average FPS of 57.68. On high, we got an FPS of 55.61, and on ultra with an FPS of 52.96. To give you a comparison, I ran this same benchmark on the 2019 15-inch MacBook Pro with the Radeon Pro 560X, and got only 29.45 FPS during a high settings benchmark. A huge improvement for the 16-inch MacBook Pro. Civilization VI is also a favorite of mine, and unlike StarCraft, high frame rates aren't necessarily a priority for a turn-based strategy game. It also has a built-in benchmarking tool, which is helpful because anyone who plays this game knows that the game can slow down quite a bit in the late game where you have tons of buildings, units, and AI opponents. Running the graphics benchmark on Civilization VI, we we're able to achieve an FPS of around 40 frames per second on medium, and it could go as high as 70 FPS. Running that same benchmark on high settings, we saw an FPS of around 33, although it could go up to 50 FPS. So there you have it, the 16 inch MacBook Pro is definitely capable of playing games on Mac OS. Now before we jump into the Windows Bootcamp section of this video, I wanted to give a huge shout out to Crosshair for sending over a bunch of their gaming peripherals, like the Night Sword RGB mouse, K70 Mark II keyboard, and Virtuoso RGB wireless gaming headset. Now Corsair isn't even sponsoring this video, but they wanted me to check out their IQ software, which is now available on the Mac for the first time. This IQ software lets you completely customize all of your Corsair gaming peripherals, so you can adjust the lighting effects on your mouse and keyboard with amazing presets like Rainbow, Rain, Void, and more. And you can get down to key level customization on these lighting effects or for complete synchronization. Not only can you customize the lighting, but you can basically customize any button, macro, the DPI of your mouse, and with settings to adjust the surface of the device for more precise control. And even customize weight settings directly in the software. You can also set different profiles to switch between these settings on the fly, as well as adjust microphone levels on your headset and toggle between stereo and 7.1 virtual surround sound. So if you do game on a Mac, you need to check out these Corsair products. I'll leave a link in the description. And you also need to check out Corsair's brand new IQ software, which gives you amazing customization for these devices. Okay, so now let's talk about gaming on the Mac with Windows 10. So to enable this, you're going to have to install Windows 10 on your Mac. First, you're going to have to download the Windows 10 software. I'll leave a link to the website in the description below. Once you go to that website, just go ahead and download the regular Windows 10 version. 
And then pick your language, just like I'm doing on screen. After you're done selecting your language, make sure that you select the 64-bit version of Windows to download. After you finish downloading this, you're going to want to run Apple's Bootcamp Assistant. Here you'll divide your hard drive into a partition for how much space you want to give Windows. And then you want to select that profile that we downloaded earlier. After that, just run through all the steps and set up Windows to your preferences, and then you'll have Windows 10 running fully on your Mac. And it's pretty simple. After this step, you have both a hard drive for Mac OS and for Windows, and you can choose which one you want to boot into, which enables you to play any Windows game on your Mac. But okay, how does the MacBook Pro perform? Well, first, I decided to load up a more modern title, like Battlefield 5, which can be played at 1920 by 1080 on medium settings. Now, the frame rate here could be a bit sporadic depending on what's going on on screen, but it seemed to be around 35 frames per second or higher at all times. Putting the game on high settings gave it an FPS of around 30 FPS, but at times it could dip just a little bit below that. Next, I loaded up Destiny 2, and I kind of ran into a problem setting up these games. You might notice that the game plays in this small little window at first. For some of these games, the only way I could fix this was by putting the game at the native resolution, which is 3072 by 1920, which is getting closer to 4K resolution. So for Destiny 2, I was forced to run it at 3072 by 1920. But even with this higher resolution, I was able to achieve around 40 frames per second or better on high settings. Pushing the game down to medium settings showed similar results, but I was noticing that the game was more likely to achieve higher frame rates closer to 60 FPS rather than 40 FPS. After that, I wanted a game with inbuilt benchmarking tools, so I loaded up Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I set the resolution to 1920 by 1200. Running the benchmark at medium settings, we got an overall average FPS of 50 frames per second. Running the same benchmark on high settings, I was able to get an average FPS of 46 frames per second. And running that same benchmark again on the highest settings, I was able to achieve an average FPS of 40 frames per second. Next, I thought it would be interesting to run some of the games we played earlier on macOS, so I loaded up the same benchmarks we ran for Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor, and Civilization VI. And here we can see just how much better software optimization for games are on Windows 10 compared to macOS. Running the same benchmark for Shadow of Mordor, I was able to achieve a rock-solid 60 frames per second on high and very high settings, where even though the macOS benchmark came close, it had more frame drops, especially during the explosion area of the benchmark. We can see similar results running the Civilization VI benchmark. And I saw really impressive results running the Civilization VI benchmark on Windows when we compared it over to macOS. For example, on medium settings on Windows, I was getting frame rates that were above 90 FPS, sometimes going into 120 FPS during this benchmark. If we compare that to the macOS benchmark, I was almost getting half the FPS on the same medium settings. Another important thing to note is that on macOS, I was running this at a lower resolution, where on Windows, I was forced to use the resolution of 3072 by 1920. And running this same benchmark on ultra settings got me an FPS mostly around 40 frames per second, but going as high as 60 frames per second. And this is also while I was running Civilization VI on Windows at a higher resolution, 3072 by 1920. So this is another area where we're seeing the same game running on both Windows and Mac OS. And just because the game is better optimized for Windows, even though it's using the same hardware, you're going to get much better performance if you do decide to make a bootcamp partition and load this game on Windows. So can you game on the 16 inch MacBook Pro? Yes, you can. Now, is this going to beat the best Windows gaming laptop out there? Absolutely not. But if you prefer macOS for your operating system and you want to play some games on macOS or make a separate partition for Windows 10 just for gaming, this 16 inch MacBook Pro is surprisingly capable in the graphics department. All right, everyone, and that's gonna do it for this video. If this video helped you out, be sure to leave me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed. Also be sure to let me know in the comments below what do you think of the 16 inch MacBook Pro's gaming performance. Also be sure to let me know if you wanna see another gaming video when I get my MacBook Pro with the Radeon Pro 5500M with eight gigabytes 
of video memory, which is the highest end video card you can get on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care everyone.